Welcome. It's Monday of Holy Week, and um, I just uh, what we're going to talk about today is the uh, Mary pouring her perfume on uh, Jesus. The text we read on Sunday was the same story, but it was in the Gospel of Mark. This is in the Gospel of John. So I want to read it to you. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of the ones at the table with him. Now Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one whom, uh, who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and all the money given to the poor? John gives him a little aside here. He said, he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and he used to steal uh, steal it. For, let's see, he used to steal what was put in, into it. And Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it. She bought it so that she might keep it, keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. And when the crowd had had when the crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus. This is an interesting fact. That came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was an account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? We learn a couple things in here that we didn't hear from uh, the story in Mark. One is we learn that the, the uh, Mary, the, the woman who's not named in Mark at all, is Mary of Mary and Martha, who is Lazarus' uh, sister. And now we know maybe why she um, you know, wanted to spend all of this money on this perfume, like we talked about this this was probably worth, um, you know, a year's wage. And why would she spend all the money on that? Well, we find out in this lesson, the reason she did that probably was because Jesus saved her brother's life, Lazarus. And we also learn that the religious leaders are coming now, not only for Jesus, but also for Lazarus, because it was because of the resurrection of Lazarus. You remember that where Lazarus dies, Jesus waits three days, he comes, and uh, he yells, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus comes out of the tomb all wrapped up, and he says, Un unbind him and let him go. Which is, by the way, what Jesus does to all of us. He unbinds us and frees us. So there it is, you know, that we find that Lazarus' life is also at stake and that uh, they don't like him because so many people have been listening to, you know, stories about how Lazarus was raised from the dead. And man, this Jesus was pretty amazing. Um, I remember one time in a uh, service, a kid's service, you know, we had this text and I thought it would be really cool if uh, we could have a perfume that would kind of fill the room. And so I got some perfume for my wife that she wasn't using called White Shoulders, I think. Uh, some of you may know what that smells like. It's a pretty powerful smell. And I poured it all over, and it filled the whole sanctuary filled with perfume. And it was uh, it was really amazing. People were leaving choking <laughs> because it was so overwhelming. And I think that's probably what it was like, too, uh, as she was pouring perfume, this expensive, expensive perfume, on Jesus' head. The question, and this is the, kind of the end of this whole talk, but the question is, what had she experienced from Jesus where she was willing to spend a year's wages on this perfume just to pour over his head? And I think the answer we get from this text today from, uh, from John is that the reason she felt this way is because Jesus had raised her brother from the dead. And that made her very thankful indeed. So the question I have for you is what would it take for you to have a relationship like that with Jesus, where you would give up an entire year's wage just to pour oil on his head, or just to give, you know, help to the poor? You know, what would it take for you to, your heart to be so overwhelmed where that would just be a compulsion you had to do? 
It's not something where, oh, I don't want to do that, but something where you have to do it. What are you thankful for that Jesus has done for you? I think the clues in this text, he raised Lazarus from the dead, and that's what he's going to do to all of us who believe in him. And so you too are like Lazarus, who so raised from the dead, but unlike Lazarus, you will never die again. Because your significant death was your baptism, according to Paul. And in your baptism, you have died and you have been reborn. You still got that old Adam hanging around. We'll talk more about that later in the week. But um, you're never going to die again. You'll only fall asleep in the Lord when that time comes. Well, God bless you. This is Monday of Holy Week. Um, I've had to take the box out because it's sh this is a difficult week. And, uh, you know, the scientists, the politicians, all telling us that this is critical. And so I want to encourage you as a favor to everyone else, if you at all possibly can, stay at your home. Um, you know, maybe go for walks, but don't go around anybody else. But please don't go to the grocery store unless you absolutely have to. Don't go to other stores unless you have to. This is an important week. And it's important that you follow the directions that are being given to us by people who know better than we do. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.